<laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Digital uh, Learning Day online conference presented by Ohio's EdTechs. I am Bill Mooney with WOSU Classroom. I'll be the facilitator for today's session or for this session. And uh, so I'll be watching on uh, YouTube. I'll be watching the chat. So if you have any questions for our presenter or for anything else, feel free to put questions in that chat and I'll try to respond to that and relay those questions to our presenter. Remember, if you're watching this session, if you want to participate in the chat, you need to be logged into your Google account. If you have any um, technical difficulties, um, feel free to get on to ohioedtechs.org. There's a phone and there's an email that you can contact us with questions, technical questions. Um, remember, there is a uh, certificate of attendance if you're interested in, in receiving that. You can go to ohioedtechs.org, and during this presentation, there'll be a code given out. You can put that code in the form, put it in all capital letters, and you can receive a certificate of attendance for this. So for this session, this session is Playlist for Student-Centered Instruction. We have Elizabeth Curtis with us today, and she's going to present on that. A very interesting topic about playlists. Liz, are you ready? Hey, Bill, I am. Okay, I'll, I'll let you take it away. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Again, I am Elizabeth Curtis. I'm with WOSU Classroom, and we will be talking about playlists. And so before we get started, let me start sharing my screen so you can see the presentation. All right, how does that look on your side, Bill? Looking good. Okay, perfect. All right, let's get started. Um, before we go into the playlist for student-centered instruction, as I said before, I am a WOSU um, classroom, and the first thing I want to know is, do you know any outstanding school districts, leadership, and or teachers? We'd love for you to nominate them so that WOSU Public Media can recognize them. Um, and because we want to recognize the most outstanding school districts, leadership, and teachers in our community. So you have until March the 4th, 2000. And 18 to get those nominations in. We will be recognizing the winners at our WOSU Classroom Innovation Mixer, and that's going to be on April the 25th, 530 to 830. If you're interested in participating in that, the proposals are due February 28th, 2018. But basically, this is just a time where technology educators, teachers, and business professionals from all around Ohio, they're invited to attend and share their passion for education, technology, and innovation. So this event will be held in Columbus at the Boathouse Restaurant, and we'd love for, for you to attend. And so... Oh, uh, Liz, you're doing great. I just want to let you know there's uh, somebody has joined us in the chat. Um, if anybody else is watching out there, hi, Judy Tucker from NWOET. If anybody else is watching the chat, feel free to let us know about your attendance and say, hey, you know, I mentioned your school district and how many people are watching. So it's always good to hear who's out there in the audience. So sorry, Liz, I was just going to jump in there and say that before you got started. Oh, no problem at all. Thank you. All right. So before I get started with um, the playlist, I wanted to first let everyone know what I considered a student-centered instruction um, atmosphere or classroom. And my thoughts about it is it's a place where students and instructors can share the focus. And so in other words, you're not going to walk into this classroom and 100% of the time see a teacher just direct instruction and the students sit there and listen. And on the flip side of that, you aren't going to 100% of the time walk into a classroom where there are just students working independently or just in groups with very little teacher instruction. So what I consider student center instruction is where there is a focus um, with students and instructors where group work is encouraged and students can learn to collaborate and communicate with one another and as well with the teacher. 
Now, there are a lot of different aspects of student-centered le learning, but I wanted to point out just a few things where playlists can really enhance that type of setting. And some of those things are you can quickly apparently see what's important. The vision, the goals and priorities, they're at the forefront and students and teachers know exactly what's going on at all given times. There's a high degree of student engagement. Um, Oftentimes it brings challenge, enthusiasm, and joy. Students know what they are learning and why they are learning. There's a blend of individual collaborative team and large group work. Uh, students have some opportunity to work at their own pace and explore their own interests. And lastly, students use personalized technology produced to produce as well as consume. So again, these are just some of the areas that Playlist really um, hones in on for a student-centered learning environment. And so let's dig right into what Playlists are. Some people oftentimes when you say Playlist, they're like, what are you talking about? Is it YouTube, iTunes, is that what you mean? Well, this, um, the term Playlist became popular with um, pro web-based programs such as YouTube and Playlist, I mean, YouTube and iTunes. And what you find is that on YouTube, for instance, I can go through and if I'm, if I want to listen to just a certain type of music, I can go through and pick and choose exactly which songs I want to hear and create a personalized playlist just for me. Well, in education, it's a similar concept. You want to go through, look at the unit that you are teaching or look at a concept that could be harder for the student. And you're going to break down that concept into individual tasks for students to complete at their own level, pace, and time. And so playlists in education, they are individualized digital assignment charts that students can work through at their own pace. And so I wanted to make sure that it's clear that it's not just a to-do list for students to do. It's a lot more than that. It, it's a complete it, you are able to compile tasks um, using all types of multiple media resources, such as URLs, videos, articles, images, files, assessments, and so on, especially with the use of Google Classroom and, and other programs like that. And so playlists are often used in a blended learning classroom when the teacher is facilitating a small group and other students are working on their playlist that is individualized for them based on their needs. And so this is a great alternative to um, small groups. I know I taught for about nine years and oftentimes I would use small groups. I'd have a group of students in front of me and I'd have stations all throughout the classroom and what I found in these situations was once that 15 or 20 minutes was up, um, you'd oftentimes hear sighs from the students. And why is that? Because sometimes, especially if they were really engaged, sometimes they just weren't done working on the tasks that I had in front of them. Playlist kind of eliminates um, that issue. And I know another issue I had was oftentimes if I had a student in front of me and they were struggling to learn that concept, um, oftentimes I would have to keep them in front of me just a little bit longer to make sure that they had enough to move on. So again, playlist steps right in and it allows you to work with who you need to work with. And at the same time, you can have students all around your classroom working on different areas um, and not having to stop at any given point because it's time to rotate or change stations. And so why use playlists? I have over here on the right hand side a, um, a little sample of what a playlist could look like. Um, they can be set up in all different types of ways. And so as we go further throughout the presentation, you will get an opportunity to see um, different playlists. So if that's a little tiny for you, don't worry, there will be other playlists that you can see. But I believe playlists are important because they give the students ownership of their learning. They actually get a voice and a choice of how they want to learn a particular concept. Um, another thing it does is it's, it has that leveraging of your time to allow for that small group instruction, what I was talking about with the previous slide. And lastly, playlists are intentional, goal-driven, and data-driven. And so what I find is that it really just helps the teacher. If you actually 
take a unit, for example, and think about how you want to plan out each lesson. As you're creating playlists, it, it kind of naturally brings up questions around the practice that students will need. And so playlists can be very beneficial if you aren't actually doing it. So just for a second, think about what a traditional setting typically looks at look like we have a teacher that will map out a series of lessons to deliver they'll select assignments for students to complete and create or select some type of final assessment at the end or exit slip to see what students have learned you know in this traditional setting the teacher may or may not share their plan with the students um, but then the execution is done by the teacher the teacher has to deliver the lesson um, they have to tell the students when to do the assignments and they have to guide students toward that final assessment. Well, what playlists will do is it will shift that responsibility and the executing of the learning plan to the students. And so at the beginning of the unit, the students will have that plan in front of them and they can work through the lessons and assignments at their own pace. Um, and you can, of course, provide this playlist to students digitally and they can have it or you can just put it on a piece of paper and they have it with them um, throughout the entire unit. So either way, it allows for a customized plan to meet students' needs for that personalized learning experience. Now, there are... Oh, before I go any further, um, if you would like to receive a certificate for today's session, Playlist for Student Senate Learning, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash DLD Ohio. And the code for this session is capital P, capital S, 900. And again, you want that to be in all caps, capital P, capital S, 900. So again, if you would like to receive credit for this 30 minute session, that is the code that you will need. All righty, moving on. Now, like I said before, there are several different ways that you can begin using playlists. What I found with all of the different things that I researched was that one of the best ways to hop into um, playlists is to actually use web's depth of knowledge. Um, so you want to have activities that are engaging yet rigorous, and you want to start off with those one and two levels, um, but then also include levels three and four. And if you have interactive playlists, you can do exactly that. And so a little cheat sheet that I found online was the OK levels based off of online um, based off of TV game shows. And so DOK, you, one, you can look at that as just basic recall of questions with one correct response. These are going to be um, kind of like that game show Jeopardy, where it's just a matter of pulling out what's been put in. Um, simple recall. So if you're working on multiplication, these are the sheets that are three times two equals blank, five times three equals blank. That's those types of tasks. But then you move on to DOK2 with Top Shelf, Chef, or any other cooking show you can think of. Oftentimes what you'll find is that they'll give um, the contestants sometimes just a basket of ingredients and say, hey, with your skills, I want you to make a dish or some type of meal. And so that's the same concept with DOK too. We want you to take your basic knowledge and do something with it. It's still that low level um, type of activity, but we do want them to use the skills that they have to show what, what it is they know. And then you have the survival, that DOK three, where you have to literally, you're put into a situation and you've got to plan your strategy, just like that show Survivor. And activities like this are more, they're all about strategy and strategic thinking. You want the students to actually have time to think about what it is they're going to be doing and producing for you. And then lastly, um, the last example is Shark Tank, that DOK4. Uh, we have down here, I have down here, design a new product or repurpose an old product. And for these activities, these activities require extended time and thinking is needed. It is a completely creative process for those students that really call for a higher level of thinking. 
And so let's pretend that you are ready, you are convinced that you need to incorporate playlists into your classroom. Here are just a few things that I believe are important to have. However you decide to set it up, these are a few things I think you should have. Number one, you wanna make sure your directions are clear and so um, you can also put in other information such as the goals, the lessons um, that they will be doing, the objectives that they're trying to meet, all of those things, the standards, essential questions. You can have all of that information at the top, but you wanna make sure it's clear to students exactly what they should be doing throughout each each point. And so, for example, if you look at the skills and concept area, um, you can basically just keep it easy for yourself. If you know that this is a DOK one level skill, make that task one point. If you know that, that you're around that DOK two, go ahead and make that task worth two points. And so what you want to also make sure you do is make the point total greater than the point total of the DOKs one and twos. Because occasionally, you know, you will have those students who will look at a playlist and it look for the easiest task possible. But you can see even on this example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Even if a student were was to go through on this sheet and do every single easier task available, they would still need to make it to 15 points and this only allows for 10 points so it kind of forces students into those greater level strategic type thinking activities and um, later you will have a link to this presentation and there's a sample template there that you'll be able to click on and um, to get started with yours. There's also two pages to this playlist. So this is the second page. Another thing that's recommended, you don't have to do, but you can also include assessments all throughout the playlist, kind of like a check for students um, to know how they're doing and also a way for you to gather, da gather, gather data on how the students are doing and just a little place where they can um, record the assessment results. And even this teacher stop that's here, it's a way to keep not only the students accountable, but also to keep you accountable as the instructor and the teacher. You want to know when you've talked to them and put that date down there and sign it. You can do this electronically or in person. And then of course, there's a spot for the overall score for that student. And I know in my class, I always had a handful of students who doesn't matter how many assignments I gave them, they always finished everything ahead of time. And I always had to have extra work and other activities for them to do. You can also have a place on your playlist with YouTube links there. You can even go and play pause it and make sure that they're answering questions as they're going through YouTube videos. So all types of things that you can include. And one of the most important aspects is how you're going to collect all of their work. And so you can just have a Google form where students can um, just click that link and they know how to go in and put all of their work. But again, it's completely up to you how you want to receive that work from your students. So before we wrap up, and I'm going to be, going to be wrapping up very shortly, um, I just wanted to give you a few tips on if you do want to start your playlist. The playlist that I showed you, it had, um, several different activities, I believe more than 10 to 12 different activities. If you're just starting off, it's okay to start off with a playlist that only has three to four items, but here are a few things that you should want to make sure that you include. Um, number one, try to use symbols, symbols to remind students of the expectations that you have for them as they are working through that playlist. For example, if you have a stop sign, you can let them know, hey, on this page, on this task, you need to make sure that you stop, that you read carefully, and that you understand everything that I'm expecting for this task. Um, you can also use a pack of gum or a repeat um, symbol to let them know that, hey, this is a place where you could easily get stuck and this game can go on and on and on forever. We want you to be able to um, notify students of when things like that can happen. And then lastly, another symbol you can use is the headphones. You want students to know as soon as they start that task, go ahead and have your headphones plugged in. So just a tip, make sure that you have some type of um, symbols there for students so that they know what to expect as they begin each task. Um, and again, provide a variety of activity choices for different learning styles. Um, for older students, 
you want to have level activity so students will have a variety of entry points into the content. And again, always check out the content you plan to use on devices that students will be using because we know not everything will work on every device. And there's more information there when you do get this presentation. And so I'm about at the end of my time, but when you do get um, this presentation, I have included links to um, several different playlists as well as several different choice boards. I know when I first began studying it, playlists kind of reminded me of choice boards. And essentially they are um, pretty similar in concept. The only thing is basically that format. And so, um, um, so again, that that's basically my presentation. Before uh, we end, I just wanted to let you know that towards the end of it, you will find a slew of resources that you can use and plug in immediately into your playlist, such as BrainPop and YouTube and LearnZillion. So I have all the content areas covered, I believe, for the most part. Um, so again, if you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, you'll have math, language arts, early literacy resources, science, social studies, all of that will be available for you just to dive right into playlists. And Bill, that's that's all I have. Yeah, thanks so much, Liz. And yeah, well, again, we'll encourage people to go to ohioedtechs.org um, and find this presentation because I have seen this presentation before. It's a great presentation with lots of really neat ideas and tricks. And there's so many good resources towards the end. So you want to kind of follow up with this presentation. So great job, Liz. And thank you so much, thank everybody, you. for joining us. Thank you. <laughs>